Svelte 5 is finally here. I've been waiting forever and it is so exciting to see this launch happen. That said, as excited as I am, I'm probably not the best person to cover Svelte stuff because realistically speaking, I don't build or ship Svelte. I do know somebody who is just as excited and probably knows a good bit more. So I'm going to let them come in real quick. <sighs> Sup, nerds. Almost destroyed the desk, okay, but we're okay. We're good, we're good. Okay, that will work. Oh my God, it's so funny seeing myself in literally anything other than a black t-shirt. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Ben, I make Theo's thumbnails, I do a ton of work in Svelkit, and I run my own channel. I'm super deep in the Svelte world, and since unfortunately Theo is too deep in the Soy React world, I'm gonna be taking you through the new Svelte 5 release. Svelte 5 is alive. After almost 18 months of development, comprising thousands of commits from dozens of contributors, Svelte 5 is finally stable. It's the most significant release in the project's history. Svelte 5 was a ground up rewrite, you're absolutely faster, smaller, and more reliable. You'll be able to write more consistent and idiomatic code. For newcomers of the framework, there's less stuff to learn. This is absolutely true. The old meme that went around with Svelte a ton was that kind of like uh, the React state example and then the just Svelte example of let count equal zero and then it works and it just magically was there. But with the new rune system, it's a little bit less magical, but it makes way more sense if you're coming from like a view background or a React background. My hot take is that the new runes feel just like hooks, but a lot nicer. So despite all that, Svelte is almost completely backwards compatible with Svelte 4. For the majority of users, the initial upgrade will be completely seamless. So literally all you have to do is just bump the versions. And what's really nice, and I'm sure though we'll get into this soon, but the all of the old code from Svelte 4, so if you have a big Svelte 4 project, it will all work in Svelte 5. The migration story is very much at your own pace. And as someone who has taken a big Svelte 4 project and brought it over to Svelte 5 in the last few months, it is a very painless process. <sighs> so what is Svelte? Svelte is a framework for building user interfaces on the web. It uses a compiler to convert declarative component code based on HTML, CSS, and JS into tightly optimized JS. The keyword there is compiler, which allows it to do a lot of really cool stuff that something like React just can't quite do. So because the compiler shifts a lot of the work out of the browser and into NPM run build, Svelte apps are small and fast. But beyond that, Svelte is designed to be an enjoyable and intuitive way to build apps. It prioritizes getting stuff done, and that it absolutely does. The team behind Svelte also maintains Svelkit, an application framework that handles routing, data loading, and server-side rendering, and all the gory details that go into building modern websites and apps. I'm definitely biased, but I think that Svelkit is one of the, if not possibly the best meta frameworks right now. The data loading system is super clean and nice. The form actions feel fantastic. It is a really, really great meta framework that does not take too long to pick up. It's very quick to kind of get going on. So what has changed and why? For one thing, we've overhauled our website. You can read more about that here. I'm not gonna go through this blog post in this video, but it is a really, really good one. The Omni site, the Svelte website was initially broken up into svelte.dev and then kit.svelte.dev and then learn.svelte.dev. They completely overhauled this to just be one unified experience. They've redesigned it, updated the documentation, restyled it. It looks amazing, feels amazing. Uh, Rich Harris's post on this is great. Definitely go read that after this video. And then as for Svelte itself, we'll cover the why first. And this is very important. We're not fans of change for change's sake. In fact, Svelte has changed less than any of the major frameworks between 2019 when we launched Svelte 3 and now, which is an eon in the front end development. Next.js. And people really like Svelte 3 and 4. It routinely tops developer surveys of satisfaction. So when we make big changes, we don't make them lightly. With more and more people building more and bigger applications with Svelte, the limitations of some of our original design decisions started to become more apparent. For example, in Svelte 4, reactivity is driven entirely by the compiler. If you change a single property of a reactive object in Svelte 4, the entire object is revalidated because that's all the compiler can realistically do. Meanwhile, other frameworks have adopted fine-grained reactivity, which is one of the awesome things that has come with Svelte 5, leapfrogging Svelte's performance. Equally, component composition is more awkward in Svelte 4 than it should be, largely because it treats event handlers and slotted content as separate concerns distinct from the props that are passed to components. This is because in 2019, it seemed likely that web components would become the primary distribution mechanism for all components. That certainly didn't happen. And we wanted to align with the platform. This was a mistake. And while the dollar colon construct for reactively rerunning statements is a neat trick, it was kind of like the old Svelte's use effect, if that makes any sense. It turned out to be a foot gun. It conflated two concepts, derived state and side effects, that should really be kept separate. And because dependencies are determined when the statement is compiled rather than when it runs, it resists refactoring, it becomes a magnet for complexity. And I can tell you from personal experience, this is absolutely true. The dollar sign colon looked really nice in really simple examples that I'm sure you've seen 
seen floating around on Twitter. But when you got into bigger, more complicated projects and files, you had a really complicated reactive page going. It got really hard to reason about and understand, and it was not it was not pleasant to work with. Moving that stuff over to the new effect rune, which we'll talk about soon, has been a huge, huge change. So Svelte 5 removes these inconsistencies in foot guns. It introduces runes, an explicit mechanism, among other things, for declaring reactive state. And as I alluded to earlier, we have now gone from let count equal zero to let count equals state zero. Interacting with state is unchanged. With Svelte, unlike other frameworks, count is just a number rather than a function or an object with a value property or something that can only be changed with the corresponding set count. It is really that simple. Arrays and objects also work like this. I bet they'll talk about that soon. It is these are really, really nice to work with. Runes can also be used in .svelte.js and .svelte.ts modules in addition to .svelte components, meaning you can create reusable reactive logic using a single mechanism. This is the new way of doing something like a store. If any of you were big in the Svelte 4 world, the writable syntax has basically been replaced with this to where we can now create classes or functions which use the state runes and effect runes and all these different runes to create these reusable stores. It's a really nice pattern. Event handlers are now just props like any other, making it easy to, for example, know whether the user of your component supplied a particular event handler, which can be useful for avoiding expensive setup work or to spread arbitrary event handlers onto some element, things that are particularly important for library authors. I've seen some library code in Svelte and the old versions of it were, yeah, it was a bit of a mess. And the slot mechanism for packet passing content between components together with the confusing let colon and the Svelte fragment syntax has been replaced with Snippet, a much more powerful tool. We're gonna go through the migration guide later and I'll show these off, but these are really nice. It's the way you can create reusable code snippets within a Svelte component because one of the big things with Svelte is that it's not like React where we can put five different components in one file. It's one component, one file, that's it. So to create some reusable markup for like maybe a list or maybe you have some piece that you need to put in a bunch of different places surrounded with an if statement, the snippet gets that done and it gets it done well. So beyond these changes, there are countless improvements, native TypeScript support, no more preprocessors, which is great, many bug fixes and performance and scalability improvements across the board. So how do I upgrade? If you're currently on Svelte 3, begin by migrating to Svelte 4. From there, you can update your package.json to use the newest version of Svelte and ancillary dependencies like Vite plugin Svelte. You don't have to update your components immediately. In almost all cases, your app will continue working as is, except faster. But we recommend that you begin to migrate your components to use the new syntax and features. You can migrate your entire app with npx sv migrate svelte 5, or if you're using VS Code with the Svelte extension, you can migrate components one at a time by selecting migrate component to svelte 5 syntax in your command palette. Svelte has a large and robust ecosystem of component libraries that you can use in your application, such as ShadCN Svelte, a great ShadCN port. It's not made by the official set EdCN guys, it's actually made by Hunabyte. It's a really great UI package, I've been using it a ton. Uh, Skeleton, also a really great one, and Flowbyte. I have not used Flowbyte before, but I have heard good things. But you don't have to wait for these libraries to upgrade to Svelte 5 in order to upgrade your own application. This is especially important for something like a ShadCN Svelte because it uses the ShadCN model of when you run like ShadCN add button or something, it just generates the button component into your code base. We need that to still work without updating everything, and fortunately it does. So eventually support for Svelte 4 syntax will be phased out, but this won't happen for a while and you'll have plenty of warning. For more details, see the comprehensive Svelte 5 migration guide, which we will be going through. It is really, really good. And then finally, there is the new CLI. Along with our new version of Svelte, we have a new command line interface, SV, to go with it. You can learn all about the S you can learn all about it in the SV announcement video, which is great, and in a forthcoming blog post, which unfortunately isn't out today. I hadn't initially seen this, but I really want to show this off because this is really, really cool. I'm really excited for this blog post to come out because I want more people to see this because this new uh, CLI is amazing. You can run npx sv create. We're going to go ahead and do this. Dot slash recording demo svelte. And then we can go through and select we want a library, a demo, a minimal. I always go with minimal. Then obviously we're gonna use TypeScript, but here we can pick from a huge amount of things. So we could add Prettier in, we could add in um, Tailwind, we can add in Drizzle, we can add in Auth, we can add in Markdown. We can just natively add all this stuff in with the base Svelte CLI, hit enter, add in the topography plugin for Tailwind. Uh, we can pick which database we want for Drizzle. I'll do Postgres, I'll do Postgres.js, I'll do Docker Compose uh, for Lucia, I'll do a demo. 
I'll pick bun for my package manager. It'll install everything, put all this stuff together. We'll open this up in VS Code. And just like that, we have a fully formed Svelkit project, which has Drizzle, it's got Markdown, it's got authentication, all of this stuff is put together. So all we need to do to actually run this project is just follow the commands that they give us. So I'm gonna do bun run db start. So that'll spin up our Docker Compose instance to get our little Postgres instance. So with our database started, now all we have to do is just run bun run db push. We'll push in our new database schema, yes. And then finally, I'm just going to do bun run dev. We'll spin all this up. I will open up my new Svelkit app right here. I'm going to do slash demo slash uh, is Lucia they said it was so now just like that we have authentication database tailwind everything set up really nicely from the official Svelte CLI they absolutely killed it on this one I cannot wait to see the full announcement and if you want to try out a Svelte project today use this it's fantastic so let's get into the migration guide I'm going to skim through this a little bit but I really want to just kind of show off runes and the cool new stuff that they've added with Svelte 5. so the first thing like we mentioned earlier is the reactivity syntax changes so if we want to move all of our old lec declarations to our new state declarations we just switch out the variables over here they have these really nice little explanations on here which I actually want to read through let being implicitly reactive at the top level worked great but it meant that reactivity was constrained a let declaration anywhere else was not reactive. This forced you to resort to using stores when refactoring code out of the top level of components for reuse. This meant that you had to learn an entirely separate reactivity model, and the result often wasn't as nice to work with. Because reactivity is much more explicit in Svelte 5, you can keep using the same API outside of the top level components. The next one that they added in was the derived rune. This kind of replaced the dollar sign stuff that we were doing before. Like they mentioned earlier in the announcement post, the dollar colon was really doing a lot of work in Svelte 4 land. It was responsible for like a derived value, like having a double variable here. It was responsible for side effects. It was responsible for so much stuff and it could be kind of hard to see exactly what was going on. So now we have just the derived rune, which basically gives us a reactive variable that is derived based off of a state variable or another derived variable. They also introduced the new effect rune, which to me is, it's very similar if you're a reactive, it's very similar to use effect just without a lot of the foot guns. There's no dependency array because Svelte has a compiler. It's able to just magically make it rerun whenever any state variables which get closed inside of this are changed. And now that we have the derived rune, it's not nearly as overloaded. So another big thing in the old Svelte world was that export let was how you did um, props for your components. So at the top of your, in your script tag, you'd say export let data or something. That's how you would get the data uh, prop in Svelte kit. Now what we do is we do uh, a destructuring here. So we create a destructured object where we have optional and required, and we just pull these out of props. We do the same thing for stuff like children and data in Svelte kit. It now comes out of the props rune instead of just out of a blank export let. So why we did this? Export let was one of the more controversial API decisions. And there was a lot of debate about whether you should think about a property being exported or imported. It's also in line with the other runes and the general thinking that reduces to everything special to reactivity in Svelte is a rune. And it is a nice way of kind of thinking about it. It's very unified under the rune syntax now. Event changes. This one is a little more subtle that a lot of people won't see it, but it does actually make life a lot easier, especially for library authors. So event handlers have been given a facelift in Svelte 5, whereas in Svelte 4, we use the on directive to attach an event listener to an element. In Svelte 5, they are properties like any other. So before the way we would do on click is we would say on colon click and then that would bind a click event to our button. But now since they're just properties, we can just pass in a function of on click. So component events, this is where you can really see the differences. So in Svelte 4, components could emit events by creating a dispatcher with create event dispatcher, which was a bit of a pain. This function is deprecated in Svelte 5. Instead, components should accept callback props, which means you pass functions as properties to these components. So in here, we have our little pump component. We're gonna have an inflate function that we pass it. We're gonna have a deflate function that we pass it, which basically allows us to edit our size variable up here in the main thing. So then within the pump.svelte uh, component, Initially, we had to go through and create these event dispatchers, and then we would have to go through and dispatch these events. The type safety on these was a little weird and it didn't feel great versus now we're just passing in functions. So it's really simple to just say, hey, we're grabbing our inflate and our deflate from props. We're going to pass in a non-click event right here, inflate, and that's it. Very simple, very clean. It feels way better to work with. The next big change is event modifiers. I'm not gonna lie, I am actually kind of bummed these are gone. These, um, I get why they're gone and we'll talk about that in a sec here, but it was really cool because in Svelte 4 what you could do is you could do like on click 
and then you add in these like modifiers to change the behavior a little bit. So you add in like a prevent default. So instead of having to like in the React world, it's super common. Whenever I'm doing something, I have to just do like my on click function, and then I immediately do at the very top of it e dot prevent default. Here, what I can do is I can just pass in a vertical bar prevent default, and then the button will just have that as part of it, and that doesn't have to pollute my handler. Modifiers are specific to on, and as such, do not work with modern event handlers. Adding things like event.prevent default inside the handler itself is preferable. I mean, yeah, but it, it was nice. Um, since all logic lives in one place rather than being split between handler and modifiers. Since handlers are just functions, you can create your own wrappers as necessary. So the same thing that we had earlier where we had like our once or our prevent default, now we basically just go through and say like for a once thing, we just wrap our function here. And then if we want to do that inside of our on click, instead of adding the bars, we just wrap the function because they're functions. This is one of those things which will definitely make it easier for other people to get into and is probably better in the long run, but it's a little piece of magic I'll miss. Uh, another little thing is like a multiple event handlers. Before we could have two on clicks, a one and a two. Now those need to be collapsed into one because again, these are functions. So we can only pass in one on click function. We can change that on click to have a one and a two. Another important call out is that uh, local event handlers must go after the spread if you're spreading props because like a normal object spread, we need to go through and if they're adding an on click in here and we put this on click beforehand, it's gonna get overridden by the prop. So we wanna make sure this on click always runs we put this at the end. In Svelte 4, content could be passed to components using slots. Svelte 5 replaces them with snippets, which are more powerful and flexible, and as such, slots are being deprecated in Svelte 5. You can mix and match snippets and slots in your components. When you're doing custom element stuff, uh, you should still use slot, but this is, this is a pretty niche use case for most stuff air on the side of snippets. They don't really show them off in that post, but I wanted to go over them real quick. The snippets are a pretty cool thing that they added in Svelte 5. Svelte is a one component, one file type framework. It's personally my biggest complaint with it. And to sort of start addressing this in Svelte 5, they've introduced the new snippets, which basically allow us to go through. And you can see in this example, we have the figure right here, which is being repeated between these two. We can now, instead of having to blow that out into a component that we put in another file, we can just do hashtag snippet figure. And then we put that in here. It's a really nice way for us to kind of take logic to take uh, part of the markup and make it reusable within the same component a really cool thing that you can do with these is you can actually pass these snippets down as props and do some cool stuff there they are a huge step in the right direction but there's definitely a future where i would love to see um where I would love to see multiple real components in one file. So finally, the migration script. By now you should have a pretty good understanding of the before of the before and after and how the old syntax relates to the new syntax. It's probably also become clear that a lot of these migrations are rather technical and repetitive, something that you probably don't want to deal with by hand. I can tell you as someone who did a lot of this by hand over the summer, it's not that bad, but it is a pain, and especially in the bigger ones, and just when you're going file to file, it would be great to have some nice migration tools, which luckily we do. We thought the same, which is why we provide a migration script to do most of the migration automatically. You can upgrade your project using NPX SV Migrate Svelte 5. This will do the following things. Bump core dependencies in your package.json. Migrate to runes, so it'll remove all the lets and turn them into states. It'll migrate to event attributes for DOM elements, so instead of on clicks, we'll get on click. And then we migrate our slot creations to render tags. So when we're just doing like a slot for a layout or something, it'll now out render the children. It'll migrate the slot usages to snippets. So we're, yeah, so we're now migrating our old little slot syntax into the new snippet syntax, and then migrating obvious component uh, creations like new component into the new mount syntax. You can also migrate a single component in VS Code through migrate a component to Svelte 5 syntax command, or in our playground through the migrate button. Not everything can be migrated automatically, and some migrations need manual checkup afterwards. The following sections describe these in more detail. I'm not going to go through all that stuff. If you have a project that you need to migrate to Svelte 5, go through and read all those. It is a very, very good resource, but I think that'll get a little bit boring. That's all I've got to say on this new release here. It is truly... It is truly phenomenal what they've done. The new CLI, the new website, the new Svelte 5 release, it is all really great stuff. I've been shipping this for like three months, had a great experience, I highly recommend it. If you're in the camp of kind of tired of React and want something a little bit simpler and cleaner, I highly, highly recommend Svelte. It's been a joy to write and you're not gonna go wrong with it. If you want a more in-depth breakdown of just my thoughts on the framework, not going through what it is, but rather how I feel about it, check out the video I did on my channel. That'll be linked down below, but otherwise, Thanks for watching. Peace, nerds.